In our last video, we inspected conditions one and two for the central limit theorem. Namely, we have to have random, otherwise we have bias. And we have to have independence, and we can get that one of two ways. One, they could just be independent, like you were sampling with replacement. Or if you're sampling without replacement, as long as you're taking a small enough sample that you don't bias the results, then you're fine, right? So um, I gave the example of little kids stealing M&Ms from bins, right? As long as the kid's stealing a small enough amount, no one's going to notice. That leads us to condition number three, which is normality. And this leads us to some examples that we can give. So how do we know whether the distribution is normal? Because this is tied up with the shape. This whole shape business down here that comes as an output from this theorem only is true if we can have condition three met. Okay, well, condition three says you either are told that the population distribution is normal. Now, you can be told that in a few different ways. It can be given to you either in the writing or in a histogram for the problem. So I can write the population is normal or the population is normally distributed. You could see those words in the paragraph that was written. Or I could give you a histogram or a dot plot or some kind of picture or graph of what's going on. You can see it's normal. Or a no normal probability plot is another one. So given um, those two are the most common, right? You're either going to be given it or it's going to be a normal probability plot that you have to look at from section 7.3. If those two things are not given to you, then you have to have a sample size that's large enough, n equals 30 or more, to overcome, if you will, any kind of weirdness in the shape. All right, so let's look at that down here with an example to kind of describe what's going on. So I have the following figures show two different population distributions along with three sampling distributions for each population. And the sample sizes for the three distributions are n equals 2, n equals 10, and n equals 20. And we're going to label each graph and describe what we see. Okay, so over here on the left, we have this gray population that is skewed right. So that's the first thing to notice, the population skewed right over here. If you're interested, the mean is 8.08 .08 and the standard deviation is 6.22. Over here on the right, we have a distribution that is normal. And you can tell it's normal just by looking at it. That would count as a given, right? It's given that it's normal because look at the shape of that histogram. That is very normal. So now we want to scroll down, and I've labeled them. They actually go in order. N equals 2 is this group right here. N equals 10 is the next set. And N equals 20 is the next set. So those are the three sets that we can look at. And there are some really interesting things to notice. First of all, if I look at the skewed distribution over here, the one on the left, it was skewed right. It was really skewed right. But when I look at samples of size 2 or size 10 and size 20 from that group, so instead of looking at individuals, figure out what I'm doing. I'm taking a group of two from this, from this group up here at the top, two random souls from there, and I take their x bar. And I graph it. Then I take another two, take their x bar, and graph it. Take another x two, take their x, another two, take their x bar, and graph it. And so on and so on and so on. I create a new distribution. It's still skewed right, but it's a lot tighter than the original distribution was, because of course the standard error is no longer, which means standard deviation is no longer 6.22. It's now a standard error of 6.22 over the square root of two which is smaller. That's why there's less spread on this first blue one. And then what's really interesting to note is look at what happens when n equals 10 and when n equals 20. n equals 20 in particular. That distribution is becoming more and more normal, right? As n increases, as the sample size increases, what happens is the distribution gets tighter and tighter packed, right? Smaller spread, and it has a more and more normal shape, right? And according to our rule of thumb, we need about 30 to guarantee quote unquote normal for a distribution that was skewed to begin with. This distribution over here on the right, it was normal from the very start. So it's normal when n equals 2 in this first graph. It's still normal when n equals 10, and it's normal when n equals 20. It's normal every, every which way. I could do n equals 3, 4, 5, 6. No matter what I do, the distribution of sample means will be normal. These blue graphs are not the graphs of the original data set. They're the graphs of the x bars of samples from that original data set. So you take 2 at random from the graph, 
find the x-bar for those two and plot it. Take two more, find the x-bar and plot it. That's what you're doing for this one. This is saying take n or 10 of them. Take 10 at random from the original gray graph at the top and then take their x-bar and graph it. And of course you miss this big tail over here and you miss the tails on the one on the right as well because we already know that when you're looking at 10 and taking the average of those 10, you're just not going to be as far out in the tails. You can't be because the highs and the lows will balance each other out and you'll end up much more in the middle. And then the 20s, look at them. They're really tightly packed. All right, so we have a lot to notate here. Okay, so looking down the left-hand column, we see that if the population was not normally distributed to begin with, then as n increases, um, the sample distribution becomes normal once n is large enough, quote unquote. Now, what large enough counts changes based on the problem, but our rule of thumb is going to be n is greater than greater than or equal to 30. Sorry, greater. Right, you want a large enough sample size to overcome the skewingness. Right, so that's our rule of thumb. Okay, so then the right column shows us that if the distribution is normal to begin with, then the sampling distribution of x bar is also normal for any sample size. Right, so you can see here that the one on the left isn't normal to begin with, but it becomes normal as n gets larger. We never hit 30, but we kind of don't need to, right? It, it was doing pretty good at 20. The one on the right was normal to begin with, and it's normal for every step of the way. n equals 2, n equals 10, n equals 20, normal, 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 always normal. So that's the right-hand column's moral of the story. Now, as n increases, the shape becomes more normal, right? So if you look at um, the one on the left in particular is the better one to see this in, but it starts off skewed and it becomes more and more normal as we go down, right? So it's perfectly normal. And so is this one at the bottom here for n equals 20 on the right as well. It's just so packed in tight that you can't really see it, but it's very normal. So as n increases, the shapes become more normal if they were not to begin with, or even more normal if they, even if they are normal to begin with. The centers stay at mu no matter what. And you can see that with this little line in the middle. It's pink. There's a little pink line right there and that is the mean, right? So it's blue on this one and then pink on the next one. I'm having some issues there, but it's, you know, blue, 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 pink, pink, pink all the way down, right? So that center is the center and you can really see it over here on the normal one. So it's pink all the way down at right, the whole time. Right. So that's the next part that the center stays at mu, just like we said it would. And then the spread shrinks. It gets smaller and smaller. See how these graphs at the bottom are so much more tightly packed around those means than the ones I begin with are. And you can see that that's what the little red lines are. Those are the standard deviation lines. You can kind of see where the first standard deviation falls. And you can see how small it is on this one on the bottom when n equals 20 versus how large it is up here when n equals 2. And I'm not entirely certain why the colors for the mean changed on this one, but the mean is blue on this. And then you have your um, red line that shows the spread from that mean right there. So the mean is blue here um, and then I believe it's the median is pink but down here once you hit 10 and 20 the median and the mean are kind of at the same spot so that's why they're kind of showing them together because it's become well more normal more evenly distributed down here and that's the moral of the story. So the shapes become more normal, the centers are at mu every time, which is a blue or pink line depending on which graph you're looking at, and the spread shrinks. And you can look at that left column in particular to kind of see. So on this top graph right here, I calculated it to be the spread to be 4.398. I took 6.22 and I divided it by the square root of 2 with my calculator and I get 4.398. By the time I'm in the middle one, it's 1.967. It's less than half of what it was for n equals 2. And then n equals 20, it's 1.39. And you can see you're only about one and a little bit more tick marks away from that pink line for where that red line shows up. That's because the standard error there is 1.39. So 
first standard error up here on the top one is 4.398, not for the one on the right, but for the one on the left. And then for the one on the left here, it's about 1.9 and some change. And then down here, it's about 1.3. And that is the central limit theorem in a nutshell. That as your n gets larger, your shape becomes normal, your center stays the same, and your spread shrinks. There's the central limit theorem written out for you, right? That's the moral of the story right there, right? Okay, so let's pause right there and then we'll come back and do some examples with some um, different numbers. So let's stop right here and we'll come back for that video.